Randy and I were getting some beer, and we thought we'd look at PBR, and it's really not that cheaper. It's like $16.99 a 12-pack or $8.99 a... No. Oh, that's $16.99 a case and $8.99 a 12-pack. It's on sale. It's on sale. You can get bottles for $9.49. And you can see that, like, the beer next to it is empty, but there's plenty of this. <laughs> Oh, so Randy came over to inspect, and uh, it's smooth, baby, smooth. He's getting his greasy fingers on it, so tomorrow I'll have a bunch of them. I'm drinking a Foster's, and he's drinking, what are you drinking? Killian's. He's drinking a Killian's, and it's beer time, Jerry. Red, white, and blue. Blue. Um, it's all sanded down. I've gone over it with a, uh, one of the good things to use when you're going over it is a, uh, nylon scuff pad, a 3M pad, like that, with a little bit of dish detergent. Just scrub the crap out of the whole thing as you're washing it. And uh, I'll go back over and make sure there's no residue, but it looks pretty clean. And I'll just sit overnight, make sure it's good and dry, and then I'll start masking in the morning. And we'll shoot this baby. Let's we'll shoot it with clear coat. Yeah, we're just gonna, we just decided to shoot it with clear. Battleship gray. Yeah. Battleships weren't flossy. Battleships were dull, weren't they? Yeah. Right. How about camo? Okay, so I'm inside the booth. Woohoo! Okay, so I wanted to show you what I did with the hinges. So the hood was just really too big to be able to paint by itself. I just gave up on that. It was just like, where am I going to put it? I can't do that. Um, so here's what I did with that. I took the old hinges. And I actually put some spacing washers. I put like four washers underneath each one and then two on the front. There, that does a couple things. It allows paint to flow underneath the edges of where the hinges will go. And uh, So that's going to be my solution for it. There's paint underneath this, so it shouldn't rust even if um, it's just primer on there. Anyway, that's what we're going for right now. I may take some single stage and shoot it underneath the hinges later, but... To paint the truck, I got the hinges like that. Now that raises the hood up, so I should be able to shoot most of this fender, right, um, without any issues of the hood. Hopefully I should be able to just raise up the hood just a little bit. Now, on the hood, I'm putting, I'm going to take these, once I get it masked off, I'm going to take it down. I put some one inch spacing blocks on the hood itself so the hood doesn't go down all the way and I also remove the hood latch you need to remove the hood latch because the last thing you want to do is try to be fumbling around with that to try to raise the hood up <clears throat> when we shoot the truck of course the whole engine will be messed off but when I shoot the truck I'll need to get up in there and uh, hit that back uh, cowling section with paint from back underneath here now with the hood raised up when I come around that hood, that paint's going to flow around this edge fairly well. So that's my solution to this, and we'll see how it works. It's either going to work well or work like crap. <clears throat> Still got to do some sanding and uh, washing the truck down, but overall it's going well. All right, so it's about 11 o'clock tonight. And I'm out in a redneck paint booth. And it has been pouring down rain. It's a little wet. Um, truck stayed dry except for the hood. The hood got a little wet until I put the end of it up. Um, but most of it's dry. No leaks. So that kind of tells me that if it rains tomorrow while we're shooting, um, should be okay supposed to be sunnier tomorrow uh, uh, yeah. tomorrow it's gonna be a whole different color all different yeah I see the hood got wet it was blowing in from there then I put the roof, roof up, the end up. So, anyway. It's kind of like Christmas. 
So I have a brand new painted truck tomorrow. We can. I got my fingers crossed, right? <laughs> I think I'm gonna hit the hay. Well, it came down last night. It was raining. Um, it stayed pretty dry, except for the, uh, the hood. It got wet. Got a bunch of crap on it. So I'm gonna have to wash that off this morning and let it dry out pretty good. Um, today's the day. Got a few thoughts on that. I'll talk about it here in a few minutes. But this is it, man. Months of work comes down to this. You feel kind of like it's a uh, the day you've been waiting to go to the hospital, right? And you got a procedure to do. Except instead of being the patient, you're the surgeon, and it depends on you on how good it comes out. So <laughs> um, I'm gonna wash this off, and then we're gonna let it dry. And hopefully in a couple hours, or uh, I'll be able to start masking it off, and we'll start painting. So the sun's coming out, and that's good. The redneck spray booth got soaking wet. I mean, there's water on the inside and the outside. Sprayed down the floor. Wash the Jeep off, it's drying. Wash off the tailgates and the doors. Do a quick little walk around. Looks good. Just wait for this thing to dry out, get all the water off of it. Don't want any drips and shit. You know. It's supposed to get pretty warm today, so the drips should. Uh, the water should evaporate off of it here in just a little bit. I got a little fan set up here, which isn't a lot of air, but it's a little bit running across there. So this is the day. I've got a mask off here. Uh, the instrument panel just kind of draped the top of it. Looks good. Big difference. Okay, so I started masking the wheels. Had a little touch up right here. I'm still working on it. Uh, masking that off. One of the things that I noticed on the Redneck paint booth is that because of the heavy rains last night, I had a lot of moisture and condensation on the inside. So I'm waiting for that to dry because it's actually, <clears throat> there's moisture on the inside of the tent, which could fall down into the paint. If I hit it on it real hard, See that paint, see that water get on the uh, hood? That is the last thing that you want on your vehicle is water while you're painting. So I'm going to bang on this uh, roof a little bit. See if I can get some condensation off of it. Where the, where, the, where the sun's hitting it, it's really coming off pretty good. But you can see on the hood where all that water hit. So we're just going to bang on this a little bit. Make sure we get all the water. Oh man, that's a lot of water. Okay, so that was a lot of water that fell down. I think I even got some on the camera. Okay, so I got a lot of water knocked off of that. It's still running off, but it's supposed to get warm today. But that would be a critical error when you're painting. You can kind of see how much water fell off. Um, that would be critical, critical bad if that water decided to come off because it was getting warm from the sun, just drop on down into the paint job. Um, that would suck. So anyway, we're moving along, keeping going on uh, getting her prepped. I'm starting the masking on the dashboard. We'll raise the hood up and start doing the uh, engine compartment. And uh, where we're at. Okay. All right, so we're about ready to shoot the paint. You need to get a few supplies before you paint. Special. Um, you need some graduated mixing cups. Paint stirs. 
filters, gloves, optional. I've gotten paint on my hands though, it takes weeks to get it off. Uh, got a couple pro touches that if you get any drips or stuff, you can soak it up with that. Um, one of the most used things that I have is called a Detro, and it is a pair of tweezers. So while you're painting, if you get something in the paint, you can just tweeze it out. And I like this one because you can put it in your pocket. Just the regular tweezers, they're real sharp, and I don't. it's hard to put them somewhere unless you got, I don't know, these just work real well. Um, I got a spray gun filter we're going to use. That's just for moisture. We'll put that on the spray gun. I've got my spray gun, which is my uh, HVLP Devilbus. And before we do anything with it, I'm going to take it apart and clean it and make sure that it's 100% for sure clean. Because there's nothing worse than having a little bit of crap come out while you're shooting. It looks pretty clean, but... I'm going to brush her out and make sure. Um, we're going to be using a base coat clear coat, which means you're going to use a urethane reducer on the base, and then this is our base coat here. And it's a metallic. Um, I already shot a little bit. That's where that came from. Your base coat is a two-to-one mixture. Two parts color to one part reducer. Tack cloths. And my gun cleaning kit. I've really got some other stuff now. This one you use a, a smaller tip. Usually a 1.2 to 1.4 is in good range because it's pretty thin stuff, the clear and the color. So we're going to be shooting with a 1.3 needle and a spray nozzle. Just going to make sure my gun's good and clean. I like using the Harbor Freight disposable cups just because I don't have to worry about when I go from color to clear, cleaning out a cup, just throw one away and go to the, go to the clear stage. You want to make sure that you match your gun to the parts. You don't want to use like weird different sizes on it where it'll spray all funkified. And I like to go ahead on uh, one of my walls, I'll put up a piece of paper where I can do a couple spray test patterns before I start spraying the truck. You also want to wipe your hose down. Uh, if you've been using it in a dusty, dirty shop, I already did that. Take your hose and just clean it off. That's one of the things you're going to have to be really careful about when you're shooting is that your hose doesn't drag into your paint because that's, that's a pain. Like when you're going over your hood, if you don't grab that hose or have it draped over your shoulder, that, hood, that hose is just going to go right into your paint. What do you think, Rand? Speaking of from experience. I, and I've done it. I promise you that. This looks good and clean. We got our 1.3 nozzle. You want to make sure you get it good and clean. It should be cinched up tightly so you don't get any air or leaks. This thing blows. Now, in between the clear and the uh, color, We'll have to clean it again. We'll have to take the gun apart and clean it once we get to that stage. See, this is a 1.8 needle. It's a lot thicker. I'm going to use a 1.3, which is a thinner needle. Or could you have two nozzles, two guns? You could have two guns. It's just more expensive. Yeah. It's like having two guitars rather than one. Unless Paul and a two, Strat. Two wives rather than one. That would be bad. Especially when they, when they start arguing with each yeah. other. Having a cat fight. 
You want to make sure your nozzle's good and clean. Butterfingers. Yeah, it's slick. Do you have latex free gloves? I don't know. These are nitrite, yeah, there's no latex. Look at that one skin. You can paint your fridge to practice on. Yeah. That sounds like a winner. And one of your most important things is to wear a respirator. I even have one for Randy. Hope it's not one you've been breathing through. No, it's brand new. Wow. This is my 3M. I've only used it on this truck, so it's in pretty good shape. Here's Randy's. So we're going to stop filming for a minute for him to get his respirator ready. I'm going to put a test strip up. Ooh. And then we're going to film some more. There you go. Let's get this shit ready. Thank you. 